Good morning, good morning, family. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. If we can kindly stand, if we can all kindly stand to our feet this morning. Praise God as we're going to start the service with worship. Amen. Ooh, Ooh, Just bless his name. We bless you, Jesus. Mashanda Yadabakandili Masia Bahaya. 
Mandele Masian de Libari Catulubosi Catalaba. Come on, everybody, just worship him in the beauty of holiness. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. Come on, lift up a worship in this house. Lift up a worship in this house. Makatalabasi and Dolubokosi and Mandele Masi Catalabahan de Lebesi Catalabahan de Lebesia. Zikatala mandele beke zoko reba yada mahandele beri anda kapaya le 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 bokushanta la mandele besi anda laba. Come on, raise your voice, raise it up to heaven, raise it up to heaven. Oh, we bless your name, we bless your name, Jesus. Le 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 ya mandola la le mandele mashi ya mandala makanda la bahaya le ba ba ma 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 ya na masia. Reba ba ma 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 ndolo bo si anda la la na na nda la ma si anda la ma. Reba ma 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 ndolo bo ko si anda la 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 ma si anda. Come on, everybody, just worship the Lord, worship the Lord, worship the Lord. Oh, Jesus, we glorify you. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we honor you this morning. Jesus, we lift you up this morning. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of glory. You are worthy of honor. You are worthy, O oh God. We adore you, Mandele Bosianda. Even now, O oh God, you are still worthy. Shakara Masianda, Lebesi Katana Masianda. Oh, 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 yeah. Everybody, let's just lift up a worship in this house. One more time. Come on, everybody. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time, we are gathered this morning to celebrate a life that is in heaven. Hallelujah. So join us this morning as we are about to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for the Lord? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus.
joy. Hallelujah. God, we give you praise. We give you all the things. 
Hallelujah. Come on and just put our hands together for the Lord this morning. Come on, I said for Jesus. Come on, let's appreciate the Lord this morning, everybody. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. He deserves it. He deserves it. He is worthy of glory and honor. He deserves our praise this morning. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have worshiped. You may kindly take your seat. Hallelujah. I would like to greet everybody that's here this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All the pastors that are here, all leaders in all spheres of our government and uh, business and uh, church fraternity, I'd like to welcome you this morning. I'd like to welcome the leaders and the, the pastors of House of Treasures Ministries with your spouses. And I would like to greet uh, Apostle, our spiritual father, um, and uh, the Oko family, as well as the Morse family this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. We are gathered this morning not under very favorable circumstances, but we have comfort in the fact that we know where our mother is right now. Amen. Hallelujah. So we may be in pain, but we rejoice for where she is. There's no pain. There's no suffering. There's no sickness. There's no sin. There's no trials and tribulations. Amen. But there is joy everlasting. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So with that being said, I know it's a very sad occasion, but I want us this morning to rejoice as we send off our spiritual mother. Amen. We've enjoyed her presence. We've enjoyed the time that we've spent with her. Some of us took advantage of the time that we had with her. Amen. And it was amazing. It's been amazing. Even this morning, with broken hearts, we still say thank you, Jesus, for the borrowed life that he gave us. Amen. No matter how much it hurts, we still rejoice in the Lord, for we know that God is good. Amen. And the goodness of God is not determined by circumstance. Hallelujah. He is good anyhow. Glory to God. Amen. Just look at the person next to you and tell them, cheer up. It's okay. Mommy is with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. This morning I'd like to welcome Deacon Benji MCB to come and just uh, pray over the ceremony. Just open in prayer for us. Amen. Let's encourage him as he comes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not easy. It is not very uh, easy, um, you know, to stand on an anointed altar full of the oil. It's easy to can sleep. So when I got the, the instruction that um, I will be opening with prayer, I went on a three days fast. Um, everyone that is a member of House of Treasures know that we take prayer very seriously. And um, Daddy, thank you for giving me this uh, responsibility to open this um, occasion. Um, when I prayed, because on you, you this is a this is a giant. You don't. It's not like you have been called to to pray for food. It's not like someone said, uh, please, Benji, bless the food for us. This is a very serious uh, occasion. And uh, the Lord gave me two scriptures. Uh, please give me um, Ezekiel chapter 37, 1 to 4, and then we'll jump to uh, verse number 10. It reads as follows. On, I'm reading it from the King James Version of the Bible. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the, in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in an open valley, and lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, God, thou knowest. Again he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 10. So I prophesied as commanded, as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Uh, please give me a um, second kings uh, verse 13 uh, chapter 13 and verse 21 I'll read it from the King James version of the Bible once when some Israelites were burying a man they spied a band of these raiders so they hastily threw the corpse into the tomb of Elisha and fled but as soon as the body touched Elijah's, Elisha's body the dead man revived and jump to his feet. We are still in the next move of God. We were asking ourselves, why uh, did the Lord take our mommy um, when we've just had uh, such a major conference? Mommy, this is still the move of God. Amen. Many of us were afflicted when uh, we heard the news, but I am saying to the whole body of Christ that as soon as the dead body, which is the current state of the church, touches the bones, the church will come alive and the revival will come. Amen. So let us rise on our feet uh, with exception to the family as we usher the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I decrease that you may increase, O oh Lord. Empty me of me and fill me with the Holy Spirit to the brim, O oh God. Anoint my tongue, O oh God, that I speak only your word, O oh God. We invite the sweet presence of the Holy Spirit, O oh God, to guide us in this occasion, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we pray, O oh God, that you touch every single one of us, O oh God. Everyone, O oh God, that have set aside, O oh Lord, their businesses, their work, O oh Lord. We ask, O oh Father, that you touch them in a special way, O oh God. And we pray, O oh Father, 
that everything that represents a value of dry bones, O oh God. We pray, O oh Lord, that by coming to this occasion to bid our mother farewell, O oh God, I declare and decree that though the valley of dry bones will return to, be, to the valley of hope, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Wahala lela wa hala lela wa hala lela wa hala lela wa runa una mo Hallelujah. At this time, we will take a, a, a tribute by the Morse family, and representing the family is Auntie Grace Maloney. If you can kindly come to the front, Auntie Grace, let's just encourage her as she comes up. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Come on, let's just encourage her. Good morning, church. I also greet you in that wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is an honor to stand here today um, on behalf of the Moors and Maloney family. In fact, I'm Grace Mohammed now. So it's an honor to stand here today. You know, today we are gathered here to celebrate Hester's life. Hester was the eldest granddaughter of the Maloney family and then the eldest daughter of the Moors family, of the Maloney clan and the Moors family. We recently chat with each other and you know what Hester said? She said, you know what Auntie Grace? I'm my mother's child. I'm Connie's doctor, daughter, and my mother was a fighter, and I am a fighter. She also said, the devil is a liar. And like 2 Timothy 4 verse 7, she fought the good fight. She finished the race. She kept the faith. Esther was a woman of strength for us. She was a woman of beauty. She was a woman of royalty. Like the, the song said, I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracle. Miracles. I live a life of favor because I know who I am. Hester knew who she was. You know, Esther's name means evening star, myrtle leaf, a Latinized form of Esther. And you know who Esther was? Esther was a young Hebrew woman in the Bible. She was married to a Persian ruler. She risked her life to save her people. And today, woman of strength, I want to salute you with this poem.
A light from our lives has gone. A voice we loved is still. A place is vacant within our hearts, which never can be filled. A bouquet of beautiful memories sprayed with a million tears. We wish that God could have spared you if just for a few more years. We've lived, we held you close within our hearts and there you will remain to walk with us throughout our love lives until we meet again. So rest in peace, dear loved one, and thanks for all you've done. We've prayed that God has given you the crown you really won. I thank you. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord one more time. Hallelujah. We will also take another tribute from the Oko family. I saw this man last night and I thought he was apostle. Amen. Uh, they, they move the same. They sound the same. Amen. And they look very much alike. Please help me welcome uh, brother Mr. Joe Oko as he comes to give a tribute from the Oko family. Hallelujah. Thank you. Greetings, everyone. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you, my brothers uh, here, uh, for those, Azubi K, Felix, and, and the rest of the family. Uh, thank you, church, for you guys working tirelessly uh, to make this event what it is. I am highly impressed uh, with the efforts of the church. Yesterday we were here, I, I saw you know, members of the church that I never knew uh, just doing all they can to, uh, to bring this to pass. Thank you all very much for being here. My name is Joseph Oko. I am one of the Oko brothers. Uh, I am here representing the family. Uh, I met my mother first in 2006 during my wedding with my wife. Um, but we had, you know, spoken previously before then. We had spoken previously before then on, on several occasions. Uh, and so my mother and uh, my brother Felix came to Atlanta on my wedding in 2006. You know, and uh, you may of you know that if you've done wedding before, uh, there are issues that surrounds, you know, a successful wedding. And so I was quite, I was nervous, you know, uh, about some of those events. Uh, but, you know, I guess my mother saw that I was a bit nervous about some things and, and she called me. She says, Uncle Joe, let me tell you everything will be all right. And so from that very moment, uh, my mother became uh, not just a, a sister to me and, and to the rest of the family, she, she became a, a uniter, you know. Um, you know that whenever there was, there was disharmony in, in the family, we could call on my mother, you know, for, as a voice of reasoning. And, and so, Ada, as it were, became uh, like a mother for us, uh, a sister to us all. So we'll, we'll give glory uh, for her life. Uh, on, on, on one occasion, I, I, went to, I went to Nigeria to visit my dad. And, and uh, you know, we, 
we were just having a conversation, and, and it led to, he says to me that when, when his first son, uh, Pastor Felix, got married uh, to a foreigner, that he was somewhat uncomfortable because given our culture, it, it, culturally, the first son of an Igbo man marries from that tribe. Uh, but it, it, the family will, they will do, uh, they will investigate the other family to, you know, to know who they are. But, but here he doesn't have the opportunity to do so because he's over there. <laughs> you know. But uh, he, he mentioned to me that upon, you know, various encounters with Mama Ada, you know, visiting Nigeria and, and him coming here, that, you know, they fell in love with Ada's spirit and personality, you know, who Ada was. <laughs> and, and so, and that continued till, till the very last day of Ada's bread. As a matter of fact, a few days before, we uh, uh, that passed on. She was on the phone with my wife, and they were carrying on normal conversation. I, and she says to me, "You know, that is on the phone." I, I, you know, I, I said, I'll, "I'll call her back because I was doing something else." That's how regular we, you know, we we because we we never expected this, you know. But uh, in in, in 2008, I came to visit South Africa. I, I stayed with my brother and uh, Mama Ada for about a month. I was privileged to spend the entire time with them. You know, what I first noticed was Mama Ada's hospitality. Uh, she, she made me my first South African uh, male. Uh, it was called, uh, if I could recollect, it was called Boy Keep Up. And, <laughs> and, and I loved it, you know. Uh, needless to say that by the, time I, by the time I left, I had put on quite a bit of weight. When I got to Atlanta, my wife said to me, well, it sounds like you went to enjoy uh, but what impressed me the most was her total commitment to the success of the real estate business. My mother was practically running the entire office. You know, my brother was always busy doing this and that. Uh, Ada was, uh, my mother was always in the office. She managed uh, all of the affairs of the office. And I noticed quickly that she had gained the respects of all the agents that worked uh, in the office because of her managerial style. You know, every time I, I came back to South Africa, I, I also noticed that Mama Ada and my brother had, that they had built bigger and better, you know, whatever endeavor that they were engaged in, you know. If, if it was real estate, they were building bigger and better, you know. And, and that was, it was a testament to the, you know, the, the commitment that she had to their success, you know. Uh, and, it, you know, just staying around them, I, I, I said to myself that, you know, I don't think my brother could have married a better wife for himself. You know, in the years that followed, my mother had the, uh, the diagnosis. It seemed pretty devastating and, and depressing. But she maintained a positive posture about it. When, when you carry on conversations with her, you, you could never in any way see that she was 
she was affected by the diagnosis. What personally, what I saw was uh, a person, a human spirit that has triumphed over fear and doubt. Uh, you know, an unshakable determination to succeed and live out her destiny. She's here today. She's been chaired home by, by many. My personal assessment is that she's gone home a hero. You know, Apostle Paul put it best. You know, he says that now I'll paraphrase that she has fought a good fight. Uh, she has finished her race and she has kept the faith. Well, finally, uh, why we we'll sit here, brothers and sisters, to honor our departed uh, sister? Please realize that all hope is not lost. Life is not hopeless, regardless of the circumstances. No matter the condition, all is not lost. Uh, and so my admonition uh, to the church, uh, to the family and friends, therefore, is to take heart. Never give up. Never give in or give out. The Spirit of the Lord is here. It will heal the brokenhearted. Thank you very much. We will all be eternally grateful. My family, we will be eternally grateful to the Lord and to the most family for our last life. Thank you. Hallelujah. God is good and all the time. Come on, just lift up your hands and offer a sound of praise to the Lord. God, we worship you. There is no other God like you, God. There is no one like you. Nobody compares to you, God. You are worthy, oh God. You are great and you are great.
Take another tribute by a friend, and that's Miss Desiree Pillay. If we can all just put our hands together as we encourage her, she comes this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Morning, church. Um, it's an absolute privilege for me to be paying tribute to my friend today, but also one of the most difficult things I've done. So please allow me to read what I've written. I've learned that grief is another name for love. We grieve because we had the opportunity of connecting deeply with another human being. This is essentially the most bittersweet of human experiences. I wrote this with great sadness over the unimaginable loss of my best friend. Hester, she fought a brave and strong battle for over three years but the cancer would not allow her to get better. She took each day in stride, never really complaining, always feeling tired and always hoping that the treatments would finally end so she could get on with her life. This was my hope too. This beautiful woman, inside and out, was a wonderful friend to me, supporting me for over 15 years with her gentle and caring nature. One of her beliefs in life was the importance of being authentic with people, saying what needs to be said because it's good for the relationship and for the soul. Unfinished business causes pain and having peace is essentially for a healthy and joyful life. Also, I always admired how she never judged or first her opinions on anyone, but offered valuable and truthful advice that I will surely miss. I hope she forgives me for the many times I brushed her off when she talked about the possibility of dying. I just wanted to keep her spirits up, so I always told her that she would be okay and not to worry. Perhaps she wanted to have those tough conversations, but I never let her go down that path, and I know she didn't want to upset me either. That's just the way she was. She always kept her sense of humor. And even when she was in the hospital, I said to her that I wish I could take her pain. And her response to me was, I would give it to you in a second. You can have it. I remember once she and I were talking about something I was struggling with. And she said, look at me. Meaning that you never know in life, so make change even though it's tough and do the things you want to do and dream of about before it's too late. Those three words came across so clear. 
My friend was loving and real. She was a wonderful wife to Pastor Felix, an amazing mother to Ashwin, Gershwin, Kion and Hannah, and laid a very strong foundation for them. The many people who love her family will reach over them as she is and make sure that they have a great life full of her values and wishes. Her magnetic smile will be missed by all who knew her. Her beautiful spirit will live on through her family and they will always know how much she loved them. She tried with all her heart to stay for them, but God called her and she had to go. During my friend's illness, I know that there were three things that kept her going. It was Pastor Felix, it was her children and her hope. Otherwise to face another day would have been tough and I know how many days she had like this. Now my hope is that she rests in peace, knowing she did all that she could and that her family will be fine. When we love people, it's so comforting to know that they will always be with us in our hearts. You are gone way too soon, and I look forward to the day I will see you again. Rest easy, my friend. I love you. You fought so well. You inspired so many. You loved so deeply. You lived so loudly. No one that ever knew you can ever forget you. Hester, I never will. Enjoy your rest and bask in His glory. I'll see you when I get there. With a broken heart, I celebrate your life. A poem I'd like to share with you today called Remember Me. Fill not your heart with pain and sorrow, but remember me in every tomorrow. Remember the joy, the laughter, the smiles. I've only gone to rest a little while. Although my leaving causes pain and grief, my going has hurt, eased my hurt, and given me relief. So dry your eyes and remember me, not as I am now, but as I used to be. Because I will remember you all and look on with a smile. Understand in your hearts, I've only gone to rest a little while. As long as I have the love of each of you, I can live my life in the hearts of all of you. Thank you. Guyo wana ma Biological kids. I want us to welcome Geshwin, Eshwin, Kion, and Hannah Oko as they come to pay tribute to their mother. Come on, let's just encourage them this morning. Very brave, very strong. They've kept it together. Come on, let's encourage them as they come. Hallelujah. church. At first I thought that my speech was going to be about me describing my mom and how amazing she was and the role model she was. But I didn't feel I need to because it's evident in all of us uh, as my mom's biological children, in my mom's spiritual children, in her family and in so many other people that my mom really is a role model and she really is a powerful woman
I refuse to use the word was because, mommy, you are and will always be remembered. You are alive and present in so many of our actions. For example, when I pick out an outfit, there's just some outfits I wouldn't pick because I know you wouldn't be happy. But really, mom, what would I do and what would I be if I didn't have a mom like you? Yes, some days will be hard. And some days I'll be happy. But today, mom, I'm so proud of you. You're wearing your crown and I want to celebrate you today. Not because you are gone, but because of all that you've achieved. So thank you, mom, for everything. I've already said it. But I'll say it again, I love you always and forever. Good morning to you all. Thank you to my Heavenly Father for giving me the grace and strength to stand before all of you today. My mom has left a mark on this world that can never be erased. Her life has touched and influenced many. My mom taught me how to be a gentleman. My mom taught me how to fight and never ever give up. My mom was just proof that God is alive. And every single day when I'd go and hug my mom in the morning, I'd see a beautiful smile despite what she's going through. My mom showed me how a woman should carry herself. Every single place my mom went, she'd leave a trail of her beauty and elegance. Thank you for fulfilling your assignment, mom. And at the same time, showing me mine. You are the best mother I could ever ask for. You stood by me and protected me even before yourself. You were there be for me before anyone else. I saw it every day. I saw what you went through. I saw you wake up in the morning and pray despite what you were going through. I'm sure you're looking down on us right now and you must be surprised about how many people's lives you've touched and influenced. No one can ever replace you, mom. I know you're resting and I'm so glad that you fought the way you did because you are wearing one of the most beautiful crowns in heaven right now. Not only are you my mother, but you are mother to many. I love you, Mama Abraham. I love you forever, Mommy Kent. Good morning, friends and family. I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all for the support you've been showing us during this tough time. And may God bless all of you that's been there for my family, my dad, and all of us. As your son, mom, I feel like I grew up with the most beautiful mother, incredible mom, and role model, who taught me to always be myself and to always push myself to learn more and do better. Even though we had our differences and arguments and all of that, I learned the most amazing lessons from you, Mom. And that's patience, strength, and respect. Mom, your selfless, selflessness didn't just show after you were diagnosed with cancer, Mom. You have always been this way for as long as I can remember. You have put others first before you always, and you always try to be the rock in our family and for the church and for your friends. 
I am honored and privileged to have been your son. You always loved me and all your children unconditionally. And you were the best mom and wife to daddy that anyone could ever wish for. You will always be a part of me, Ashwin, Kian, Hannah, Daddy, and the rest of the church. And Mom, I'll always miss you, and I'll always love you forever. Good morning, church. Twenty-three years ago, we we were living in a township called Aldra Park. I was living with my my grandparents, and I was I was living with my grandparents. And in 2005, I moved back with my mom. My mom never always had everything, but she made sure that we always had everything. Ma. Ma, I don't know how. Hallelujah. Amen. Just another one of those reminders. You know, so many emotions all over the place. So many memories. Uh, Mommy was an incredible woman. She would bite your head off and hug you at the same time. Amen. Amen. Just an incredible woman. And this morning to pay tribute to mommy as well as a friend of the house. He's been our brother for quite some time now. Please help me welcome Pastor Kai Amteto. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning to all the bishops and the apostles that are in the house. The fivefold ministry that's represented today. To our father, Apostle Oko, his beautiful family, and the wonderful leadership and the family of this church, we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. This morning when I walked in and I saw the apostle, you know, lifting up his hands. <laughs> um, and, you know, the Holy Spirit reminded me of David in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12. The Bible says that when... David had prayed and his first son could not be healed. Scripture says he took off his garments of umzilo and he ran into the house of the Lord and worshipped. And um, Baba, you are the living image of that scripture for me today. And you are the personification of that chapter to say that you have prayed, you have fasted, you have sought the heart of God, you have served God diligently and pursued the heart of God, helped us as men in some of the most trying times of our lives, and we respect you and we honor you. May God comfort your wonderful family. And the Apostle Paul says to Timothy, he says that the Lord strengthened him for the sake of the gospel. May the Lord strengthen you for the sake of the gospel. You are my strength, strength like no one, strength like no one. It reaches to me. Yes, you are my strength, oh, strength like no other, strength. 
strength like no other, as it reaches to me. You are my strength, strength like.
shepherd. burdens being lifted off glory to God come on let's just appreciate Pastor Kayam Teta one more time as we welcome one of our pastors in this house amen to represent the church in paying tribute to mommy uh, Pastor Khatliso Muchadibane come on let's just appreciate him he's been standing with our father since day one till now come on let's just appreciate him one more time I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. No matter the season, Jesus is still Lord. He's still on the throne. 
nothing will ever dethrone him. Um, I'm tasked with one of the hardest things I've had to do, um, and it is to stand before you all to speak on behalf of the church, given the event. No mom was one person who liked speaking from the heart. You know, every anniversary, daddy's birthday, mother's day, father's day, whatever the event, mom would only stand and speak from the heart. I wanted to, but I thought, let me just write it down because I don't know, I'm questioning my strength this morning. This is not an easy task, but I'm not here to play with words nor impress, but rather to speak as a son whose life has been touched because of mom's simple love. One of the things that make it a bit hard to stand here is that aside from the 25 years dad had given to mom, I secretly sneaked in 10 more years to say, Lord, on top of the 25, make it 10. Add more 10, make it 35. Because there's still a legacy that mom needs to establish even stronger. I had many desires, but we all know the Bible says many other desires of the man in a man's heart. But only what the Lord plans and, and what he desires will be established. I believe that mom had, a, had already begun a legacy and we had many more memories to build. Memories where she'll be chasing around a lot of her spiritual granddaughters. Many memories where mom will be doing a lot of things around, but the Lord uh, decided otherwise. We just find comfort in knowing that mom now rests with the Lord, cheering us on amongst the cloud of witnesses. When comf we find comfort in knowing that she is with Jesus. As I speak on behalf of the church, I know that many might relate with the fond memories that you might all have because of the various encounters you had with mom. I know my very first encounter could relate with a lot of people. Happened that on my very first day at House of Treasures was on my birthday week, and as custom is, dad called up people to come to the front while we were in the tent. And it was not usual for me, while I'm standing there, the first lady comes to give me a handshake and a hug and say, happy birthday. I grew up in church and I knew first ladies were always put on a pedestal. But this one came to give me someone she's never met, someone she's never known, a hug and to say, welcome to House of Treasures. For me, I know we can relate with many. And that's why I felt import important to share this as part of those in the church. I know I've made mention of an incident that happened on my wedding day where I was tasked with the, with the task of collecting the songs for the wedding, but I accidentally forgot my drive after spending three days putting songs together for my wedding day. I forgot the drive at home. So when I got to the venue, I had to freestyle and make plans. As long as my wife's first, uh, the song that was to be played when walking up the aisle was there, she was happy. But one mistake I did was not make a plan for the first dance song. So the DJ told me that we've got a song. What song would you like? And I thought, oh, okay. DJ Kent uh, featuring, I forgot his name, Justin Shalis. It was a house song. And that was the first dance. That was the first song to our first dance. But many of you or few of you who might know, my wife hates house, house music. So she ran off the dancing floor, and I was the only one on the dance floor for my first dance. I was the only one dancing there, and little did I know, mom would go fetch my wife from the door, come back with her, and my memory of my first dance was with my wife as well as my spiritual mother. Not only did she save me the embarrassment, but I have a memory engrafted in my heart that on my first dance, my spiritual mother was there with me. Now, I say these things because many of us can relate. We relate, we've had previous encounters with mom, small encounters, whether big or small, but however big or small it is, it stays embedded in our hearts and a part of our lives forever. That's the kind of woman she was. She sacrificed herself even when many would not. I've seen mom going to a funeral on her birthday back in 2016. Many women would want breakfast in bed, but mom was like, my spiritual son needs me. I will go stand with him. And on her birthday, on the 3rd of December, 2016, I was with mom, and we were all the way in another province, and we were standing with her. She lived a life of sacrifice. 
even during the Excel conference, the Excel conference usually clashes with her anniversary. She would have, it wouldn't be out of the norm for her to say, but baby, no, I need to go on a holiday. But instead she chose, I will stand with my husband for the sake of our spiritual sons and daughters as well as for kingdom advancement. She sacrificed all the great leisures men we would want for themselves for the sake of the church and the spiritual house. Now, we cannot make mention of mom's strength. Mom was strong. A true iron lady. Even in her last moments, we saw mom fight. And my favorite part is that not only did mom teach strength, but she transferred her strength to Gashron, Ashron, Kion, and Hannah. These guys are strong. <laughs> These guys are strong. Take it from me as I tell you. And in many moments like this where people would want to say prayers while they are encouraged, we send prayers to the family. One of the things that we also need to do is say thank you to the family. To the Oko and the Moors family, thank you. Thank you. While we were in the hospital that on mom's day when mom passed, I was shook to see Uncle Goddess and uh, Auntie Priscilla comforting other people. And their words were this, to us she was a sister, to you she was a mother. Be comforted. Thank you for sharing mommy with us. Thank you. To Gershon, Ashwin, Kion, and Hannah. This moment you don't share it. You share it with us as spiritual sons, but as her biological sons and daughter, thank you for sharing mom with the world. Thank you very much. Sometimes the opportunities that were yours, you were entitled to, she would sacrifice them for the sake of the spiritual sons and daughters, but you understood. Thank you very much. Thank you. We truly appreciate you. And to the apostle, the lion, dad, thank you very much for loving mom, for sacrificing for mom, for being there for mom, for making sure that we openly witness you, love mom and never hold back. You made it difficult for any spiritual son to say, I will quit. Even when it was not pleasant, you stood there. A few months ago when my wife was battling some health things, you were the one you were the reason I stood. You were the one that made it possible for me to stand. Dad, thank you very much. Because of you, and none of these, none of your sons in the ministry will ever fail their wives. Thank you very much, Dad. We love you. And lastly, to the queen herself. Mom, I know I'm talking to you here, but you're amongst the cloud of witnesses. Thank you, Mom. We've watched you go through the most, but you stuck it through. On behalf of House of Treasures, we just want to say we thank you. We love you. We honor you. We dearly appreciate you for each and every single thing that you've done, for every sacrifice, even when it was not pleasant. During the ownership conference, you fought and stuck it through. You fought the battle, and we saw you stick it through, and you fought. Even when you took your last breath, it looked like you were coming back. But because of how strong you were, we thought, hey, mom's back. But we know that you were going to rest with the Lord. For everything that you've done, for the strength that you imparted, thank you very much. Mom, we will see you at the rapture. We love you very much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Pastor Khatli. So let's just put our hands together for him one more time, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right now, I want to call on his apostles, very close friends. Amen. One of apostles, very, very close friends and brothers. Amen. I was uh, privileged to sit with him, with Pastor Khatli. And I was saying to myself, how does this man know the things that he knows? Man, he was just talking and, you know, amazing, amazing man of God. He is a friend of the ministry and he is our uncle. So, Church of God, let's put our hands together as we welcome 
Pastor Uncle Ike Nwanze. Hallelujah. Come on, you know we love him in this house. Hallelujah. When peace like a river attended my way, <laughs> when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my life, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, ah. it is well with our soul. greet you Hester to your phenomenal children you raise champions I, I greet you my sons and daughter to my dear friend you represent truly what covenant means in friendship you're a special guy I greet you to the leaders in the house thank you to probably one of the best churches house of treasures thank you thank you I'm struggling you know they say pastors don't struggle but I'm struggling I'm not struggling because she's transited I'm struggling because how do we eulogize an enigma how do we talk about a woman who represented what womanhood really is how do we explain the vicarious posture that she had as a wife she was simply what I call the example of the believer in all ramifications she was a friend she her smile was just every time I had the opportunity to talk to her I could see from the other side of the telephone she talked with a smile even in her pain it seemed as if she knew no pain how do you talk about a woman who made other homes know that there is hope in marriage how do you talk about a woman who represented what the fullness of life truly embodies. Hester was my own sister. You know, the first time I met her, 
she was to sell me a house. She came to talk about the house, and here was I as a potential client looking at this phenomenal woman who carried herself with so much grace. And I remember saying to her that you're one of the most beautifulest women. I added the word fullest because she really was full. Her smile, everything about her was gracious. But to um, summarize my heart, she was a mother in Israel. It's the best that I could say of her. A mother in Israel. I um, struggled last night. I wasn't, I didn't know I was going to say anything, but I was paying my tribute to her as I kept the family in prayer. About 3 a.m. in the morning, praying for the family. My heart was this, that the whole of those that were in the hall of fame in Hebrews in the 11th section wouldn't be complete if Hester's name isn't put there now. You know, out there in the world, they celebrate theirs. Today we celebrate our hero, a phenomenal woman, our hall of famer. Somebody whose legacies will live long in our hearts. Many women would truly look to her and say, yes, this is what it should be. I, mean, I remember saying to the children and I said to them, you would remember all that your mother taught you by the things she said and the things she did not say. She had more by the things that she did not say. She was truly a hero. And so church, I want us to be comforted and celebrate God's goodness. She's in a better place. Hester, I love you in all of my heart. The love you showed me and my family, the love you shown this house, the love you shown your children, and I can't stop talking about the love you showed your husband. Um, where I come from, we have names for women who were crazy about their husband. She was one of them. I used to call her Ruth. She would die for her family. She would die more for her husband. To Felix, thank you for showing us what truly a husband should be. Thank you for loving her the way you did. Thank you for being that example to the world. The Lord will comfort you and the children. And just know that the best has only just begun. Hester, goodbye. We'll see you on the other side. Come on, church. I want you to do me this favor that we stand and clap and celebrate this incredible woman. Come on, we can do better. And I want us to shout and rejoice. What a woman. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While we're standing, while we're standing, everybody's standing. Such a privilege and an honor once again. Um, we have another friend of our father, amen, and uh, their neighbors. So our pastor was telling me that when he wakes up in the morning, he sees Bishop swimming on the other side. I'm just playing, amen. But they literally live just behind one another. And uh, he has endorsed so many artists. He is a father to so many of us in the gospel industry. Help me welcome, please, Bishop Benjamin Dube as he comes to pay tribute to our mother this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated, church. God bless you. Apostle Felix Oko, the Oko family, the Rose family. To be absent in the body 
is to be present with the Lord. I believe Mama left a message, a very clear message, and it started with Auntie speaking about the message. She lived that message. And that message is a fought a good fight of faith. I ran the race. I kept the faith. In other words, she didn't lose her faith. She still believed. Believed. But the body couldn't keep her. She still believed. If there is any message that she actually portrayed, especially for the family and the church, is that fight. Run. And keep believing. Keep believing. I believe that in his last minute and last hour, she, st she said, I still have my faith. I still believe. Even though the body may be giving me up, but she must have said, in your presence, that's where I want to be. want you to take that with you. Keep fighting. Man of God, God is proud of you. He is proud of you.
your name Jehovah is your name Jehovah come on lift him up right now and just worship him Jehovah, Jehovah, He's your everybody. hugged her and kissed her on the forehead and he stopped all of us from praying and I was still trying to figure out what to say to him to just try and cheer him up and he opened his mouth and he said listen even the ones that Jesus raised from the dead ended up going amen so fret not don't worry don't stress it's okay amen he is a man of faith pops we love you so much Everybody, let's just put our hands together as we welcome Apostle Felix Oko. Come on, you can do better. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody give Jesus praise in this house. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. I, um, well, I'm here to pay tribute to my wife. Who have been with together for 21 years it's been an amazing 21 years of my life incredible 21 years you know I went with my wife everywhere we traveled together we went to preach together we did everything together we attended meetings together we ran our business together many years ago when um, I began to do well financially. I said to my wife, I said, babes, she was working at that time for a company called Auto in General. And I said, baby, I'm doing well now. I want you to resign from your job and look after our kids. And I promise to take care of you and the kids. I will work as hard as I can to make sure that I give you the best life that I can. And she obeyed me and resigned her job and began looking at after our kids. And that's almost 16 years ago. She left work and began to walk with me. So we've been doing life together. And it's been an amazing life. Um, I'm going to miss a whole lot about my wife. Uh, a whole lot. I mean a whole lot I can't even I don't know where to start even when I walk into our room I always I'm expecting her to say something you know while I was looking at this casket I'm saying, saying the way my wife is a fighter I'm expecting her to move <laughs> that, that, that's how I'm, I'm, I'm just looking at the casket and expecting something to shake that's how she fights she's a fighter 
never quits on anything. I remember one day when we got to the United States for her treatment, uh, they were just about to change the treatment in the U.S. And the doctor was a, 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 a doctor called Dr. Anna Tuckers. And he sat us down and gave us the side effect of the treatment. He says it would destroy the lymph node, it would destroy kidney, destroy liver. It would. I said to the doctor, this is demonic. This is not a treatment. And I said, my wife, he, they wanted me to sign. You know, America, you guys live in the States. They sued for everything. So they wanted me to sign. I said, I'm not signing. How can you be treating one organ and it kills six organs? The devil is a liar. I said, I'm not signing. So we left back and went back to the hotel. <clears throat> we got to the hotel. My wife said to me, baby, you are a man of faith. It says, I've done treatments and they've given us the side effects and we did it and the side effects never showed up. And she says, after she spoke, I said, let's go back the next day. She spoke faith into me. We went back, I signed and she did the treatment. And all those side effects never showed up. I remember we got there and they, we told them, please, can you gather all the things you use for the treatment? And I, we laid hands and began to speak in tongues. She was a fighter. She fought all through. That's why when she called me that night, while I was in Zambia preaching, and she said to me, baby, let me go. Release me. I knew it was time. Because she's never said that. And I'm glad that she has fulfilled her destiny. She has finished her assignment. You know, she was my strength, literally. She taught me so much. I've shared many of them during the memorial. She taught me how to love people. She was also a very hard person. You know, if you come to ask me of anything in my life, I will tell you, I don't know how to say no to people. It's such a difficult thing. I can't look someone in the eyes and say, if you ask me for my hand, I will tell you, let me think about it. But what I used to do was that I had a strength beside me. Anytime you ask me for something I can't say no to, I will tell you, let me, I will send you to my wife. And I know the answer already. By the time you're walking through the door and you mention half of it, she has already said no. She was a very strong woman. And um, life is not going to be easy without her. Um, you know, with how much we've worked together for all these years and by the grace of God raise God a people raise God uh, this house and many sons all over the world and daughters God has helped us he has led us he has directed us my wife was an elegant woman I remember sometimes when we drive out and we get to the grocery store and she sees women in pajamas, you know, those morning slippers. She will ask me, how does a woman come to the grocery store with pajamas? My wife, when she, when she dresses, she's completely elegant. Even to the grocery store, she had a swag. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. She was a good woman. We fought life together, battled together. God helped me. She raised my kids. One of the things I thank the Lord was that at least she raised my kids to a point where they understand what life means. She was always with the kids. My children are phenomenal. Um, God has given me the best children. And I've seen my wife raise them, taught them, taught my daughter how to be a woman. Taught her how to took her to modeling, took her to belly. All the activities she went, my wife was there. Because I was about just doing the work of the Lord. And she has stood by me all these years. You know, um, brought me to her family who received me. Although when, when I met her, you know, uh, my mother-in-law said, where is he from? They say Nigeria. I said, never. <laughs> Marie, Nigeria, never. She said no immediately. But you know, 
as time went on, I began to, you know, uh, you know, bring the godliness in me out and, and showed her love. And uh, the one that broke the camel's back was when I bought her a car. And uh, I didn't tell her, I said my, I to my wife, invite your parents. So they came. And um, they came, they were in the lounge. And I took my mother-in-law because I knew she had, even though she loves me, there was still a beef somewhere. Uh, I don't know about you, amen. So I called her, I, I told her, I said, let's take a walk. So we walked out through the kitchen door and went to where the car was and we leaned, both of us leaned our hands. I said, ma, ma, uh, Oma, I used to call her Oma. I said, Oma, I have something to tell you that is disturbing me about your daughter. She looked at me so sternly. I said, what I want to tell you is that me and your daughter have decided to buy you this car. <laughs> and Oma began to weep. And she gave me a hug and gave me a kiss again. I said, blood of Jesus. This kissing thing in this family. Amen. So, and um, you know, we, we, we gave them the car from that day. Unfortunately for Godfrey, I became the first son. After my wife, it was me now. Amen. In fact, I was the first son. You know, when, when my mother-in-law was passed, uh, passed away, she told the doctors to call me. I was the first person they called. And that's how close we became. And it was just through this amazing unity that I had with my wife. And we shared, I led her to Christ. I led my father-in-law to Christ. Um, you know me, everywhere I go, I preach the gospel. And I'm glad that they are both in heaven today. Amen, somebody. I remember before my mother-in-law was admitted in hospital, we broke bread together and I said, oh my, it will be well, it will be well. And she left from my house to the hospital and never made it. My wife, uh, in the same manner, when she called me on that fateful Sunday, I was uh, preaching for one of my sons, Pastor JC and his wife, who have done a phenomenal work in Zambia, built an auditorium, massive auditorium and uh, I was to dedicate the auditorium on Sunday morning and my wife calls me at 2 in the morning and says, baby, let me go. I need to go. My body can't carry me anymore. I want to go. And um, I preached that morning, left there, got into the flight. When I got into the flight, my prayer was, Lord, you know I love my wife. You know my wife means everything to me. And in that week, we have been really fighting and praying. And, you know, she will, she will hold on to me and will pray one hour, two hours, three hours. And I'm wondering, where do you get this strength from? And, um, but when she called me that day and I got into the flight, I said, Lord, I've seen my wife in the past week going through intense pain that no husband wants to see. And I say, Lord, this is my quest to you. You know, I, I am a man of faith. I've raised the dead before. It's not strange to me. It's not, it's, a, it's, it's not strange to me. I said, but if instead of my wife to be alive and still be in pain, let her go to heaven. That was my resolve in that, on that flight. So when I landed, I, uh, with the protocol picked me up rushed down to the hospital by the time we got there she was gone and um, I was just confident that my wife has gone to be with Jesus I, I mean I, I've been with her uh, you know all these years to know how she loved the Lord my wife loved God there were times I am an early, early riser I wake up at 2 in the morning and I pray probably for the rest of the thing. In fact, my younger brother that came from Atlanta, he, this morning he saw me, he says, ah, ah, man of God, did you sleep? I mean, he says, from 2 a.m. I was hearing shout because the room he's sleeping is next to mine. I was hearing prayer in tongues. I said, yeah, I was praying for the church to be healed. He said, what? <laughs> and that, that's the truth. You know, we, we had built our life around prayers, around around fellowshipping with God and the Holy Spirit. 
and um and she's left a serious void in my life that only God can fill. And um, baby, I will always love you. Will always, you will always be in my memory. As a matter of fact, it's so difficult for me to forget this woman. You know what she did? Let me tell you guys. Our bedroom. She told me that she wanted this hotel room ambience. So she started ordering things. She ordered the curtains. She ordered the, all the things in the room. And then she ordered a black carpet. Because she says she loved the black carpet in my office. Now they installed that carpet day before yesterday. She ordered it. Little did I know she was designing the room for me. And you know, she did the, my room, if you enter my room, you will think you have arrived in the Holy of Holies. And it was all by her. Baby, I love you. I know you are watching us right now. I fought with you. I fought for you and made sure that this cancer will deal with it. That you will come out victorious. I was believing God for an extra 25 years for my life, for my wife. I wanted her. I said, God, if she lives up to 73, I will, I will be okay. You know? But, um, uh, uh, you know, when you serve God and you are matured, there is a sovereign part of God that you must leave to him. Uh, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, we're not careful to answer you concerning this matter. He said, be it known unto you that our God whom we serve will deliver us. But now they made room for the sovereignty of God, even if he doesn't we still won't bow to your image. And so we must leave room for that even if he doesn't. He's still God. One day I was praying, I said that you heal my wife does not diminish you as God or increase you as God. You are the same. Whether you heal her or you don't heal her, you are still my God. That's why I can wake up on a day like this I was playing music and dancing in my room, prayed in tongues for almost two, three hours. And I, when I finished praying, I started dancing, celebrating her life. I said, Lord, you gave me a good wife. And going on, I don't know how I'm going to do it. This is what I said to you. I'm just going to hold on to your hands. And you work this journey, walk this journey with me. You will lead me and I will follow. Amen. Uh, you, our House of Treasures family, you know how much I love my wife. I don't think I can even preach a message without mentioning her. It's almost impossible. That's because of the love and the bond we had. It was such a bond. You know, she left a memory that I will never forget. On the day that I was leaving for Zambia. She looked at me and says, baby, come and bat me. I'm like, what in the world? Come and bat you? I'm like, woman, get a grip of yourself. But you know, she walked under the shower, ran the shower, and stood there waiting for me. And I said, this woman means business. And I walked into the shower, gave her a nice bath. She says, this is beautiful. She looked up to heaven and said, this is beautiful. Little did I know I was preparing her to go. I left that morning to Zambia. She went to do COVID tests because we were flying to Chicago on Monday to go and start preaching in that week in a conference uh, for one of our dear brothers and the church called Church on Fire. But you see, we all plan and God's plan will always override our plan. So my, my dear children, you know, I was listening to my kids speak. The grace that is on you people's life, that mommy has deposited on your life, is just amazing. And to the church family, I want you all to take heart, be strong, we'll continue. The best thing you can do for me now is give me less headache. Give me what? Less headache. Those of you who are beating your wife, stop today. So that you don't come to my office and sit for five hours. Amen.
Those of you who are rebellious, if you are, if you are having a extramarital affair, stop it now. In the name of Jesus. It's a covenant you must enter today by this casket. <laughs> Amen, somebody. I made a covenant with God that I will never sleep with another woman ever. And I've kept it till today for 21 years. My wife is here. My, her body is here. So you, 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 need to, you need to honor your, the covenant of your marriage. It's a very serious thing for me because I've seen it's a destroyer of destinies. Of all the things I preach, you know the Bible says that every sin a man preaches is outside the body. But that one, you sin against your own body. You are not married, you are not permitted to have sex. Ah, you know, no amen in this Catholic church. You are not. I will preach it for the rest of my life because it's a stronghold in this nation. The Lord spoke to me when I came into South Africa 21 years ago and he said to me there are two demonic forces that rule this nation. He told me straight. He said the one is the spirit of violence. He says blood are shed here for nothing. And the second thing he told me is the spirit of immorality. And that day I made a covenant. I will not sleep with any woman that's not my wife. Church, listen. You better honor God. Heaven is real, hell is real. You know, uh, on the day my wife passed, one of the things I thought of, I said, what if this woman was not a child of God? What would have happened? That's hell forever. And that will not be your portion. I pray that as the word comes, if you are not born again, give your life to Jesus and serve the Lord. We've served God together for 21 years. We know nothing else but Jesus. We've served God in South Africa, served God all over. We've traveled to almost all African countries and almost all the nations of the world. I used to take her with me because I didn't want issues. I don't want scandals. You know? I don't want scandal. I don't have any woman scandal. One day in the church, I asked if I have ever proposed to you to say, I want you, I like you, stand up. And I was waiting for a Jezebel. But that day you would have received a slap from me. Amen. <laughs> but nobody stood up. Amen. So, you know, this woman has helped me. She was everything I wanted in a woman. And that was what even made it so easier for me. No matter how much people come, you know, all the Jezebels will come, all, the, all of them will come in all shades. And when I look at her, I look at my wife, I say, ah, ah I call her. I call her. I call her. Suga. Suga when her. How dare you? Amen. My wife was a God, man, gorgeous woman gorgeous woman her wardrobe <laughs> boy the shoes I don't know whether my daughter will wear if my daughter wears one shoe per day she may wear my wife's shoe for 20 years there's shoes everywhere amen elegant woman baby I love you I'll miss you and um, keep cheering us Keep cheering us. As hard as it is, we promise that we will finish the work that God has given to us and join you on the other side. We'll join you in glory. And when we meet again, I know how, if it's possible, I know how you will run to me to come and give me a hug and a kiss. I know. I know. I don't doubt that. You know, and I know your love for me never diminished until the last day. My wife would tell me, I love you 50 times a day. I love you, I love you. I say, this love is too much. <laughs> you know, Messi Chim was saying, Jesus, you love me too much. Oh. My wife is, Ada, you love me too much. Oh. <laughs> too much. Oh. Amen. But, you know, we shared a good life. And I'm, I'm glad I'm glad uh, with the way she departed because she never wanted to become a burden to me and the family. One thing she never, ever wanted. My wife never wanted to be a vegetable on the bed 
and then people will be batting her and no. She says, instead of me to be like that, I would rather go. She wanted to be agile, okay, strong. You know, on that night when, when she called me and the ambulance came to pick her up, according to uh, my children and, and her younger sister, they wanted to bring a bed upstairs to come and pick her, put her on the bed so that they can take her to hospital. She says, for what? No, I can walk. In fact, she said to me, she said to them, make my bed, please. My bed is, I, I can't leave my room like this. She told them to make the bed. She walked to the ambulance and laid down. And they took her to hospital. She was a strong woman. Amen. Now, going through her phone, I see all the attributes, the things people are sending to her phone, and also her messages to people. I'm reading, if you ever sent my wife a message, I have your secrets. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm with her phone. So I'm going through her messages and all the encouraging words. In the midst of pain, she's encouraging people. It will be well. God will heal you. God will do this. God will do that. She'll be praying for people. I'm reading all these messages. I'm thinking, what kind of woman is this? In the midst of your own pain. We cherish this woman, this great woman. As a church, we love you. And the foundation you have laid in this ministry will not be altered. God, we keep building on that which you have laid. You have shown many women example of how to be a married woman. In the midst of, we can have arguments. My wife will walk in with me, hold my hands. Oh yes, we disagreed many times. My wife and I don't like the same thing. We are so opposite, it's not even funny. Like, I mean literally opposite in everything. If you show my wife something and she says it's gorgeous, you show it to me, I will say it's made by the devil. That's how we work. But how God united our heart and put our heart together that we work together in unity for all these years. You know, she showed many women how to be a wife to their husband. My wife will cook in pain. She never said one day that I, I don't want to cook for you. Sometimes I would tell her, baby, are you sure you're strong enough? She would say, yes. Um, on Wednesday, we fast every Wednesday in our church uh, since the inception of the church. So there are special meals that I eat on Wednesdays. And so she will make sure that she cooks them for me. You know, I know the other Wednesday, I think it was Wednesday, my son tried to replicate the same thing. And he kept asking me, how is it? How is it? You know, I, I, I enjoyed it, son. I am confessing. <laughs> but my wife's one was better. Hallelujah. <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. That day I was eating that meal. My son was sitting where she sits. And um, they kept telling me, eat some more. But I was in tears on the inside. Just seeing where she sits. Because when I eat, she watches me. She says she likes the way I chew. He said, I chew like a bushman. <laughs> I say, it's because I'm enjoying the food. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, <laughs> so she will sit there, watch me till I finish eating. She won't be eating. She will just watch me till I finish eating. And she will be happy that I eat very well. I love food. I eat a lot. I, I fast a lot, but I, when I eat, the food will sweat. Praise God. So we, we've been through this journey for 21 years. I'll miss her. But the work of the Lord continues. I thank God for his strength. One of the things I pray greatly this morning is that Lord, renew my strength and that of the church. And I've seen that there's a new strength that's on me today. Yeah, I prayed earnestly for it. And um, we believe God for the greater, for the better. Amen. She'll be happy if what she's left behind, we build on it from glory to glory, faith to faith, blessing upon blessing, that we build on it. So my dear spiritual sons and daughters in House of Treasures, 
walk with me and this is my plea to you again make my life easier be obedient to God and to his word there is nothing that gives me joy to see people who love God if you love God with all your heart your soul, your mind, your strength you have fulfilled my joy that's all I want from you to make my life easy to pastor you I told you now Yes, I will be focusing on the church. That's my assignment. But now my children need me the most. I need to spend more time with them. All those rascal moves. I used to come here, stay here three days in the auditorium, lock myself up and be praying hours and hours. Those things, obviously, I would need to cut down on them to be with my children. Take them to school, love them, teach them, you know, guide them until they become uh, men on their own. Uh, one of the things she begged me when, when uh, before she left, she said to me, make sure that you get the twins to the United States. And by the grace of God, they should be leaving soon to the United States to go and start their life in the U.S. <laughs> Amen. My son got a scholarship, uh, Keon, to go and school in the U.S., he will also be leaving next year. So literally, I'll be shortly into the U.S. almost every week or second week to go and see my kids. Amen? So the less headache you give me, the better for me. Church, I want you to know that I love you all. Thank you for all the support you've given me and my family in this season. To my dear pastor friends, um, you know, you guys have been the best. Thank you so much. I may not have the opportunity to come back here again, but I want to say thank you to you all, to my kids for staying strong and standing. You know, you are not breaking in pieces. My kids are writing exams and they're so strong. To my family, my brothers, and, uh, uh, you know, your wives, I'm grateful for everything that you've done. To the Moors family, thank you for giving me the best woman in the world. Amen. Praise God. Family and friends, thank you so much. Love you all. Thank you for being there. All the financial support um, that you sent to make sure that this event happens. We receive seed from all over the world. Uh, yesterday, my dear friend, Apostle Joshua Selman, sent me 30,000 rents. You know, just to say, man, I'm behind you. I, he was supposed to be here. But unfortunately, uh, because of the quarantine process in Nigeria, he wouldn't make it. You know, to everyone all across the world that have sent us gifts, sent us blessings, prayed for us, we are so, so grateful. We know that it is because of your prayer that we are standing. May God bless you all. I love you. And we will see you again. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I am a few minutes behind schedule right now, so I'm going to just uh, fly through the next two items so that we can get into the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, right now, I want to call uh, Sister Marianne, it's Mama Ada's younger sister, to come and read the cards. Marianne, if you're ready, if you can, let's just uh, encourage her as she comes up. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. Um, we're going to read the cards and the rhythms, and they are as follows. Keeping the family in my heart and prayers, please accept our heartfelt condolence for your loss. Our prayers 
are with your family. I hope God blesses and comforts you during this difficult time. Psalm 73 verse 26. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. We never would have felt ready to say goodbye to someone special as Mama Ada. Wishing your family comfort and strength for the days and weeks ahead. We are all going to miss her so much and we will be praying for all of you. As AY, we would like to express our, sin our sincere condolences for the loss of Pastor Mama Esther Oko. May God grant you strength that you never knew you had. May he give you the grace to carry on. We celebrate Mama Ada in her angel wings, the best mom we could have ever dreamt of, a wife family. You were phenomenal, impactful, full of love amongst others. We will miss you dearly, Mama Ada. May God strengthen our spiritual father, your children, friends, and House of Treasures Ministries family at large. Your, your lessons and legacy lives on forever. Rest in glory, Mama Ada, from MB Guyamba family. To our beautiful Mama Ada, we love you and thank you all you have, you have deposited in our lives. From Outreach family, we will always love you. My heartfelt condolences to Pastor Felix, Ashwin, Gershwin, Kion, and Hannah, the Moose and Oko family and House of Treasures. You are in my thoughts and prayers, my best friend Hester. Death may, <clears throat> death may have taken you away from me, but it can never take away our memories. In my heart, you hold a special place and will forever stay. No one will ever take your place. Farewell, my friend. Until we meet again, rest in peace, my drums. Love you always, Feroza. To the Oko family, thank you for sharing your amazing mother with us these past few years. She's been a ray of sunshine and a pillar of strength to many of us. She has loved us uncondi unconditionally and never failed to let us know this. She, has a beautiful, she was a beautiful woman, both inside and outside, and I am eternally grateful to have gotten the opportunity to know her. Her memory, <clears throat> her memory will forever be attached in my heart. May God be with you all during this time and may he give you peace and comfort. May you all feel the love she gave at this time and know that she is rejoicing over your lives. She'll always be with you all and she will never be forgotten. May her beautiful legacy live on forever. It was truly an honor to have known her. May her soul rest in eternal peace. May God's comfort be upon you as a family during this time of loss. Always remember that love is a bond that cannot be torn apart by death. And that although mommy may be gone, from your arms she'll always be held in your hearts. I pray that God's grace and love comfort all of you. Be still and know that God will give every one of you strength through this situation that you're facing right now. Love you all. Thank you. Lastly, letter to my sister in heaven. The older we grew, the older we grew, the stronger bond between us became. I was always proud to have you as my sister. Now life has taken us down separate paths. I've lost a mom, a friend, a shoulder to cry on. We used to share everything, laugh, cry, and joke around. I saw my sister keeping strong and fighting this disease from the first day she found out. She kept reading books, listening to messages on healing, praying, and fasting. 
She was a strong, loving, giving, caring, with beautiful smile inside and out, and very submissive. If she, if she doesn't like you or not happy with you, you will see it in her face and she will also tell it straight to you. I will miss you for that. Sis, there's so much to say about you. God has gained an angel. Me and my husband promised to try our best to take care of your family, especially the kids because you always trust us with them, especially when you and Pastor travels. To Pastor Felix, I know this still feels like a dream. You will miss your babe, your other, your queen, your everything. But keep strong for the kids' sake. And I know you will take good care of them. This road will be long, but it will heal in the process. To Auntie Alina, thank you so much for taking care of my sister when she was not well, making her bed and tea, food. I know you loved her. Keep loving the kids even now that she's no more. Kids, Gashun and Ashwin, it's time to man up and take care of Kion and Hannah. They look up to you guys. Keep loving one another like mom taught you guys. Never stop. To his family and friends, colleagues, church members, say us no. We know she loved each and every one of us. We will miss her organizing family lunches, bride, and gatherings. She was too good at that. Never a dull moment with her. I will miss teaching you my dance moves, and I will miss you designing clothes for me. To everyone that came to the house, called, sent messages, contributed, and helped with the memorial service and funeral arrangement. We won't mention names you know yourself. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Lastly, to the Oko and Moore's family, let's stay strong, be there for each other. Comfort verses Matthew 5 verse 4 and Romans 15 verse 5. Live for your sis, was out there, rest in peace till we meet again. Mary Ann, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Mary Ann. I was expecting some fruch and more and her love, something with the inside the Africans, amen. But we thank God, hallelujah. Please, let's just fix our eyes on the screen if the slideshow is ready. Are we good? Thank you.
Come on, let's just put our hands together one more time. Glory to God. And now for the reading of the obituary, I'd like to welcome Sister Gladness as she comes to read the obituary for us. Let's encourage her as she comes. Hallelujah. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I please ask that we all stand with the exception of the family? We all standing. Band, if you can help me make this moment what it needs to be. Okay. Pastor Hester Adeze Oko, affectionately known as Mama Ada, was the first child of the late Mr. Isaac and Mrs. Connie Morse. She was a committed wife to Apostle Felix Oko and a loving mother to her four biological children, Ashwin, Gershwin, Kion, and Hannah. Together with her husband, she founded House of Treasures Ministries, a thriving church in the south of Johannesburg that recently commemorated its 10 years anniversary. Pastor Hester was known for her passion for the less privileged, which prompted the establishment of House of Treasures Ministries philanthropic arm, I Care, which runs outreach programs to the less fortunate. She also provided oversight to the church women's ministry, among other responsibilities. In May of 2021, Pastor Hester launched her first book called The Valley of Hope, which she detailed her journey in the battle with lung cancer and that she aimed to inspire hope to everyone who is faced with a hopeless situation. She will be sorely missed by her husband of 21 years, her biological children, her siblings, her extended family, her friends, her sons and daughters in the ministry. She will be remembered for her love, her strength, and her unshakable faith in the Heavenly Father. Rest in peace, Mama Ada, till we meet again. Let's keep standing. Let's keep standing as we prepare to go into the Word of God. Hallelujah. Everybody just lift up our hands to heaven and just worship God for 30 seconds. Just prepare your spirit, prepare your heart. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Everybody say, come on, great are you, Lord. Come on, let's shout it out. Great are you, Jesus. Great, say, great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath. In our lives. So we Say you have made us proud, man. 
maybe I can also speak on, on behalf of South Africa to say thank you for loving our sister. Amen. Proud of you, man. We're proud of you. And thank you for breaking the stereotypes. Thank you for representing Nigeria in a proper manner. And thank you for representing the heavens the way you have done. Thank you for representing men of God the way you have done. Thank you for shining for Jesus and the church of Jesus. Thank you, thank you. May the good God continue to honor you, protect you and your family and this church, this beautiful ministry. And we pray that more and more of churches like this in this country will be born today in the name of Jesus. You may be seated. I know it is painful. I know it is a challenge. But while you were speaking, this word came to my spirit just for you. And later on, we're going to speak to the, to the church because we need to speak to the church. I just heard the Lord saying, trust the process. You may not understand, but this is a process. Joseph didn't understand. When he was sold to slavery, he was accused, betrayed, put into prison for something that he did not do. It was just the process. So you are in a process together with your family, your children. It's a process. And many a times don't understand the process and they don't want to go through the process. That is why there was a debate between an elephant and a dog. And the dog looked at the elephant and say, you have been saying you are pregnant. And twice I've been pregnant, two times. This is what the dog is saying. And I've dropped the puppies, not once, twice. And now I am pregnant again, says the dog, to an elephant. The elephant looked at the dog and said, you are a dog and you are carrying puppies. I am not a dog, I'm an elephant. It takes 22 months for me to carry an elephant. I must go through a process because what I'm carrying in the inside, it is not a puppy. Man of God, I want to tell you what you are carrying in the inside, it is not a puppy. You are carrying an elephant. No wonder the process is so painful. No wonder the process is so long. No wonder the process, many people cannot explain it to your entire family. Understand you are in the process and you are not carrying puppies. Let those who are carrying puppies celebrate and say whatever that they want. But if you are carrying the elephant in the inside of you, you know it's going to be a journey. You know it's going to be painful. But listen to me, the day an elephant release that calf. It is actually called a calf. But day one, it is not just a calf. It is an elephant that is in the inside. Day one, that elephant begins to walk. But it had to go through the process. Hang in there. Trust the process. Only God knows. We're going to see later. Be strong, my brother. We love you. We celebrate you for all that we have done. And to the entire church, my message is simple. In the next 15 minutes, I strongly believe we are called to live a life of significance. A life of significance. That's what I want to talk about. You see, life is a gift from God to all mankind. What we do with it is our gift to Him. It's a fact that many of us are not living the way we should. We have settled for less. We have accepted what life has thrown unto us. I strongly believe 
that we are here in this beautiful auditorium, in this beautiful event, because God wants us to live a life of significance. I have been a minister now for over 25 years. I have discovered that in life, there are three levels of living. The first level is what we call survival living. This is where you live for today. You just live to survive. You live from hand to mouth. And many people in this country, they are in that level. They get their salaries today, tomorrow it's gone. They just live for today. Majority in this country or this world, they are found in this first level of life. Some of them, they even produce a song. I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor. I'm... As if we are born to survive. And we have camped right there. And we think that is the best of God. And I'm here to tell you that is not the best of God. There's a second level, which is a level of successful living. Life of achievement. Success and dreams. Fortunately, most of us, we have arrived to this level and then we have camped right there. Especially the body of Christ. And all of us, we've got dreams, nothing wrong. I also have my own dreams. As a matter of fact, I am living my dream. I build the church that I've prayed for, the house that I'm in, the car that I'm driving, but I've realized that there's a trap right there. Many of us, we camp right there. We think we have arrived and we bless God and say, thank you, Father, that we have prayed for the blessings. We have prayed for a successful life and we thank you, we take a back seat and then we enjoy our life at this level which is called successful living. But when I was introduced to the apostle, the first day we spoke about our success. And I remember him telling me and saying, you know what? As much as God has blessed me in business, I am not satisfied. I cannot relax and settle, you know, in my beautiful house while people are suffering in this country. He says, I want to do more. He came and then he showed me the building here. He showed me the stand. He says, man of God, we still want to go into another level where we want to be a blessing. And listen to me. This is a level that I want to talk about this afternoon living a life of significance you move from surviving you uh, you move from surviving to success but you don't camp into success you go to another level which is called significant living this is where you live to better others and we all know that pastor or that she wanted to better the lives of other people we are here today to celebrate her. The reason is this woman of God said, I wanted to better the lives of other people. When you look at that word significant, it simply means to live for something bigger than yourself. To live for a cause or a purpose that, would, that will last beyond your death. Many a times people when they die, they die with their things. But significant living is to give something that is lasting. To extend yourself to others. We are here because the woman of God, she extended herself to others. Just like her name, she extended herself to others. Listen to me, children of God. When you read in the book of Acts chapter 9, the story that we all know, the Bible says in verse 36, in Joppa there was a disciple, underline that, there was a disciple named Tabitha, and in Greek her name was Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. 
About that time she came, she became sick and died. Her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. She had an upstairs room. She was successful. You cannot have an upstairs room if you are not successful. I don't know why people fight our upstairs room today because it's right there in the scripture. And the Bible says in verse 38, Loida was near Joppa. So when the disciple heard that Peter was in Loida, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows, here is the thing, all the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. While she was still with them. That is the key right there. Not when you are no more. They came and showed Peter and say, this is what she did while she was still with us. Peter, we cannot allow this woman to die. We cannot let her go. We are widows. Look at us. We had a better life because of her. I wonder if it was you in the coffin this morning. What can we say about you? You know, sometimes, man of God, as a pastor, how I wish if somebody, if God is about to take somebody, how I wish he can come to us as pastors and, then, and, and ask for a permission and ask us to show him who is the person who must go. Because I've got a list of them in my church. I've got a list of them. I would say to God, please God, Leave this one. Mago tatelo. Tata nalo. Lona nalo nalo. But leave this one. The reason is it is because of the life and the impact that they have made. These widows, they come, they say, Look, look what she has done. I wonder when you get into the coffin one day, what are the people going to say about you? What are the people can show us? What is it that they can show us and say, Look what this woman has done? This is what I call a life of significance. You need to qualify. You need to graduate from surviving. Also graduate while you are successful. As a matter of fact, you know, God has made you successful. He has blessed you. He says, Abraham, I have blessed you so that you can be a blessing. Because the greatest life it's when you become a blessing. Not just when you keep your blessing to yourself. Not just when you enjoy the blessing. You speak of a success for yourself. It is you, I, my dogs and my cat. Yet around you, the lives of people are struggling. The life of people, you know, are going down the drain. Yet you call yourself a successful person. Listen to me, a successful person, it is this woman in the midst of pain. She writes a book, you know, Valley of Hope. She never thought about herself. She never thought about her pain. She said, I needed somebody in my pain so that they can learn something. So that even if I'm not around, they can learn something so that they can become better people. This is what I call significance. 10 minutes. So the question is, how do you begin to live a life of significance? Number one, you need to become a disciple of Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says in that verse. It says there was a disciple in that city or in that town by the name of Dorcas. She made an impact because she was a disciple. Number two, if you want to live a significant life, is that you must be driven, driven by the Holy Spirit, not your ambitions and your own motives. You need to be driven. And then number three, how does this begin? You need to be different. Be different, man. Be different. Don't try to be somebody else. All of us, we are unique, born for a purpose and for a reason. 
So be different. This was a different woman of God. She was a woman with style. She was a woman with understanding. She was a woman full of life. She knew her role in this ministry. She came in and painted her color. Be different. What color are you painting in this nation? What color are you painting in your community? Number one, you need to be a disciple. You must be driven. What's driving you? Fortunately, we live in the country where people are driven by greed and corruption. Be driven by purpose. And be different. And how do you achieve significance? How do you achieve that? Number one, you need to see beyond yourself. See beyond yourself. You will never live a life of significance if you can't see beyond yourself. Most of the time we see ourselves. That is why when we die we are forgotten because we never saw beyond ourselves. Church of Jesus, we need to come to a point where we see beyond ourselves. And number two, we need to see beyond our situations our circumstances, our environment. We need to see beyond the culture of the day. Sometimes as a church of Jesus, we can be caught in a culture and we can't even see beyond our culture or what we have built. It's amazing that we can even spiritualize everything. When God says, I'm looking for a man to stand in the gap, nothing wrong with prayer. We always think, about a man who can stand and pray. We never thought about a man who can stand in the space of medicine. We never thought about a man who can stand in the space of business. We never thought about a man who can stand in the space of politics. We never thought about a man who can stand in, in the space where children can be held. We take everything, man of God. We said, God says we must stand here. Yet God says, I want you to stand, see beyond yourself. What is happening around you? What is happening with the children around you? But this man and the woman of God came all the way from Nigeria, planted a ministry here, and look around here. Pastors have been born. Great women have been born. Because you saw beyond yourself. You wanted to better the lives of other people. That is the life of significance. I pray that that spirit will be in all of us. And number three, as I close, we need to see beyond your seed. See beyond your seed. See beyond your gift. See beyond your talent. See beyond whatever that you give in the house of the Lord. Don't give your money and see it right there in the offering basket. Sometimes people, they, they don't even see beyond the offering basket. They actually stuck right there and say, here goes my money. It goes to the pastor. They can't even see beyond that. That is why the church of Jesus, we have never impacted the community because we always fail to see beyond our offering. We think we are making somebody rich in state of blessing other people. Here is something that is troubling me, men of God, that in this country there is one organization that is known when there's a disaster, when there's a disaster, gift of the givers. And who's leading that organization? I don't, I don't have to mention. It is other religion. And I'm asking myself, where are the Christians? Where is the church of Jesus? When there was COVID, when there was, when, when there was a problem, it is because we always fail to see beyond ourselves and we fail to graduate into this level of significant living. What a woman. What a woman of God. We're going to take her into a final destination. But her work will remain. That is what I'm talking about. Do you receive it this afternoon? Let me close with this story, which is my favorite story. It is the story of the man by the name of Jonathan Edwards. Those of you who are familiar with church history will remember Jonathan Edwards. Born in 1703, died in 1758. He was only 
55 years old. The only boy out of 11 children, born the same year with John Wesley. Gave his life to the Lord at the age of 13. At age 17, studied theology. Age 19, was given a church to pastor. Married at the age of 24, blessed with 11 children also. Now, in 1730, we are told he brought a moral and a spiritual awakening in America. So when this man died, somebody came in and compiled, you know, the story of this man. He wanted to check the impact that he has made. Because you cannot tell us who you are when you are still alive. But we're going to understand who you are when you are no more. So somebody came in and then compiled the report of this man. And this is what they've discovered about this man. They are saying by the year 1900, his children and descendants included the following. 13 college presidents, 65 professors, 100 lawyers, 30 judges, 3 U.S. senators, 1 U.S.A. deputy president, 66 physicians, 135 editors, 1 publisher, over 100 overseas missionaries, over 100 philanthropists. Here is the final statement there. It says his descendant caused the government not a single cent. That is a life of significance right there. You don't live deaths when you are no more. You don't live problems when you are no more. But you make an impact that even when you are no more, I am looking forward to meet your, your sons and your daughter and your daughter five years later to, to see what the Lord will do with their lives because this woman, she's not just going to be buried, but it is a seed that will germinate and it will continue to grow in your lives, in the lives of your children, not only the lives of your children, the lives of your church, the lives of this community, so that even if we come 50 years later, we can still see Esther. We can still see Pastor Ada in all that she has done. That is the life of significance. Would you please stand on your feet? It was Albert Pike who said these words. What we do for ourselves dies with us. What we do for others and the world remains and is immortal. Can I read that again? What we do for ourselves dies with us. But what we do for others and the world remains and is immortal. I'm saying to you, child of God, I'm saying to you, young man. I'm saying to you, mama. I'm saying to you, daddy. Just graduate. Life is not about you. God has not created you to survive. That is not the best of God. Listen to me, businessman. Life is not about success. Don't camp in your success. That's not impress God. The question you need to ask yourself, why am I so blessed so much while other people are not blessed? It is because God has blessed you so that you can graduate to another level where you begin to live a life of significance. Change your environment. Change your community. Change the lives of people. Give bursaries in your community better the lives of your community. The children who are struggling, sometimes it breaks my heart to see a man who is so load loaded and they give him a title of a blesser. Instead of you becoming a real blesser, you bless them without taking anything. You bless them without asking for anything. And you say, I believe that this is what God wants. And once again, men of God, thank you for doing that. Thank you together with your church. Thank you for, for caring for the people. Because it is all about others, not us. Graduate. You know, COVID taught me something. I used to think that my cars were important. Until we're in lockdown. 
I used to think my suits were so important until we in lockdown for three months. I was in my house wearing shorts every day because they locked us down and I thought God is teaching us something. He was saying to us, your car is not important. Your house is not important. You know, your suits are not important. The lives of people are more important, but you will never see that until you, you are elevated to the third level. You are elevated to the third level where you live a life of significance. But how do you do that? By becoming a disciple of Jesus. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is very difficult to part with your money. It is very difficult to part with what you think belongs to you. The Bible says she was a disciple. And when she died, they came, they asked Peter, please resurrect her because we know that life is better with her. Live that type of a life. Let's bow our heads, please. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Mm. We thank you that your word is real. Your word is alive. The appeal is Zulako. The Namanda. There is power in your name. Thank you, Father, that even this afternoon there are those who are at level one. They are just surviving, oh God. They are just surviving. And some of them, they are so happy about that. But I sense in my spirit in this country that most of us, we, we are praying and we are so hungry for the second level. And most of us, we have just camped there. And we are happy. Nothing wrong with success, we know, Lord. You want us to be successful. You want us so that all can go well with us. But you are calling us into this level of significance where we begin to become game changers, history makers, where we better the lives of others. Because when we are in this level, when we die, we don't die with our things. But Lord, we leave legacy behind. Thank you, Father. You are here this afternoon, just before we close this service. You are saying, Pastor Matebula, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I want to live a life of significance. I want to make a difference. Pastor, pray with me. I want to make sure that you come to that level. You are saying, I want Jesus to come into my heart. I've got a minute, please. But you want me to remember you as I close this session. Wherever you are, just raise your hand and I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray. God bless you, man. Is there anybody else you want me to remember? God bless you, man. Anybody else? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's how you do it. When we plant a seed, something must grow. God bless you. Put those hands down, please. And I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. Church, let's help them to pray this prayer with me this afternoon. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Be a Lord and a Savior of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Do you believe that? Come and give God a big hand of praise. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. To all of you, to all of you who prayed that prayer with me, I strongly believe that God is a God of grace, is a God of love. He's a God of destiny. And he's a God who's full of sense of humor. You thought you were, kept, you were coming to a funeral, but God was giving you a home right here. This is your home. As much as you have traveled today to say farewell to the women of God, God is adding in this church. And I want you tomorrow, right here in this building, there will be a church service. By the way, what time are we starting? At 10 o'clock right here in this building, there will be a service of celebration. So make sure you are here and they're going to show you some love in the name of Jesus. And greetings to all the bishops and all the pastors. May the good God bless you, men of God, together with your family once again. And once again, thank you for the excellence in the house of the Lord that we have seen in this place. We are proud of you, men of God. We love you in Jesus' name. Over to you guys. Amen.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's appreciate the men of God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Just one quick announcement. We've come to the end of this program. Um, I believe we are ready to, to, to exit. So just a quick announcement. Those that are going to the cemetery, I believe you have your confirmation. You know who you are, the family, close friends. Uh, please uh, just switch on your hazards. For the first time, I actually found out that hazards was not a vernacular word. It was because I thought, Mauti Shama Hazard. You know, but uh, I found out that hazards is actually an actual word. So please switch on your hazards. Amen. Make sure that you are visible as we drive out to the cemetery. Also, um, for all those that are not going to the cemetery, please remain seated in the auditorium. Everything will be streamed live on our screens. Amen. You'll be able to see everything happening there. And after the streaming, um, you will then be uh, uh, given food and refreshments. Amen. So please, very, very important, remain seated in the auditorium and watch the service on the screen. It won't be a very long service um, and everybody will then get something to eat. So please don't go without eating. Uh, a lot of food has been prepared for each and everyone that's here. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So before we leave uh, this morning, uh, probably you came here and you brought an offering. I want to give you an opportunity to give. Amen. For the family, just to assist the family with everything that's happening, all the preparations that have taken place. Also, you just want to be a blessing to the family. I want to give you an opportunity to do that, just that. So, Ashes, if you can quickly prepare the, the, the offering baskets. Amen. Uh, we're going to take a song and we're just going to give. Afterwards, we will then uh, be led out of this place to the cemetery. Is that okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. May God bless you as you give an offering this morning uh, or this afternoon, rather. You may be seated for a few minutes uh, as we get ready to exit. Amen. Ashes, are we ready? Are we ready with the baskets? Okay, uh, may God bless you as you give your seed. Amen. Uh, over to you. Leave 
the casket out of the auditorium. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please note, very, very important, we cannot exceed the number of people permitted at the cemetery. Uh, we're still observing all the COVID-19 protocols and rules and regulations. So please bear with us if you've not been given the permission to go. Uh, please stay put. Amen. Please stay put. Remain in the auditorium and let those that have been given the special permission to go do so. It's not that they're important or anything like that. It's just that we cannot have everybody going there. Amen. Hallelujah. Protocol, if you guys are ready, you can lead the family out. Yeah. 